In this video, I want to talk about how Bayes' rule is used in statistics. So normally in statistics, the sort of problem that we may have is that we have some sort of population and we'd like to know something about that population. But the problem is we don't have the entire population of data. We only have a sample from that data. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to apply some sort of mathematical function to that sample to help us to find out something about the population. In classical statistics, the idea is that essentially we suppose that there is some true value of a parameter which we're trying to estimate. So within the population, there is some point value which a parameter theta or a vector of parameters theta takes on. So in this example, theta in the population is just some sort of point value. And the reason that we get a different value if we take out two different samples is because the thing that is changing is the sample itself. So we've got this sort of sampling error. So in this example of classical statistics, the parameter of interest we say is fixed. And we say that the thing that actually varies is the data. So this is the case for classical statistics. In Bayesian statistics, this is slightly different. Unlike classical statistics, we don't suppose that the parameter theta within the population has a particular point value. What we suppose instead is that there is a probability distribution which governs the values which are most likely for that particular parameter. So what we suppose is, is that there is some sort of probability distribution over sort of theta here, which might look something like this. So in Bayesian statistic, it is the parameter theta, which is thought about as the thing which varies. The thing that is fixed in Bayesian statistics is the data. OK, so that's how the schools of thought differ. But how do we actually use Bayes' rule in statistics? Because up until now, we've really used Bayes' rule really solely in the sort of context of probability. So how do we apply it in a sort of statistical sense? Well, the idea is that what we do is we are interested in calculating what is the probability of a certain value of theta given that we have actually the data which we actually have. So we're trying to work out a conditional probability, which is the probability of a certain value of theta given the data which we have. And we know from Bayes' rule that we can rewrite this as the probability of the data given a certain choice of theta times the probability of theta, whatever that means, uh, we're going to discuss that in a minute, divided through by the probability of the data. And again, we'll discuss what that means in a minute. But first of all, just a quick description of some of the terms. The first term here on the left, this sort of thing that we're actually interested in finding, is this probability distribution which we have drawn down here. This is what we call a posterior distribution. And it is this which we're hoping to derive in Bayesian statistics. So what we have is we have the probability of a certain value of theta given the choice, or given that we actually have our data rather. And as I say, this is the ultimate goal of Bayesian statistics. And the posterior distribution can then be used for, for example, forecasting or hypothesis testing. OK, so that's the term on the left. What about all these elements on the right? Well, the first term on the right in the numerator is something that we may have encountered before. Don't worry if you haven't. It's known as the likelihood. And what that is, is it's kind of like a probability. It's not exactly a probability, but you can think about it in those terms. And it basically what it's saying is that given a particular value of theta, what would be the probability that we would have generated that particular data sample? As I say, don't worry if you don't know what that means. We're going to cover it in depth. But just to sort of provide a little bit of context for what we're going to do next. The next term on the numerator is the probability of theta. And notice that this is not a conditional probability. This is a marginal probability. And it is this term here which we call the prior probability density of theta. And by prior, what this actually is, is it's again a probability density over theta but now what we're doing is we are essentially having to specify our belief over the certain values which theta can take before we actually carry out this analysis. 
So this is where some people actually claim that Bayesian statistics isn't as objective as classical statistics. I hope that I can convince you that that's not the case, but I'm pretty much fascinated. This might appear that Bayesian statistics is being a little bit more subjective, but there are ways in which you can make this prior more objective, and we'll talk about those as well. And I should also say that as you get more and more data, the prior becomes less and less important anyway. The final term on the right-hand side looks deceptively simple. It's just the probability of the data. But this denominator term here is actually probably the hardest term to evaluate. And we'll talk about why that is in sort of future videos. But just for now, essentially what we're having to do is we are having to do a very, very, well, it can be a relatively complicated integral to do over all choices of theta. But you can ask the question, well, what do we actually mean the probability of the data. I mean, it doesn't really have any probability unless we specify a model. So really what we should do here is we should actually replace this conditioning on data with conditioning on a choice of model. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to sort of insert here the conditioning on the model choice into each of these expressions. So the posterior now is not just conditional on the data, it's also conditional on the model. Same with the likelihood, because you can't derive a likelihood function without specifying a model. And the prior, so the choice of probability distribution over theta, also obviously depends on the model, because otherwise, well, theta has no meaning. And then, so I should be conditioning here, and then similarly on the denominator, this should be the probability of the data, if I can sort of scrub out that bit, given the choice of model. So then, what you can see here is the denominator here is essentially, if we specify a model, but we don't specify a theta, then essentially this is what we're left with. This is the probability of the data given the choice of model, which means that we have to essentially integrate over all choice of theta to derive the probability of getting the data. So when you write down Bayes' rule in this particular form, it becomes quite apparent how we go about doing Bayesian statistics. So the first thing we need to do is we specify some sort of model for the data generation. So this is going to be dependent on the situation, but we try and pick a model which is appropriate to that particular situation. The next thing we do is we specify a prior. So a prior here, as I said before, is a sort of representation mathematically of our beliefs before the experiment of choices of the parameters. So for each value that the parameter can take on, we're going to specify a probability density. The model for data generation is actually going to help us to derive the likelihood, because the likelihood depends on the choice of the model, and the likelihood will ultimately tell us, or tell us how to find the denominator, because essentially what we're having to do is we're having to integrate our likelihood over choice of theta. All of these things together then, because of this equation up here at the top, allow us to find the posterior distribution. So the posterior distribution here is the probability of theta or the probability density of theta over all values of theta. And as I said, this is the ultimate goal of Bayesian statistics.